Do you feel that the local government and cities have uh, make their position stronger? The U.S. has increased its ambition because it's the U.S. cities, states and tribes have taken up positive uh, and commitments in the time when federal government was lacking behind, even taking it when getting away from the Paris Agreement. The second NDC of the U.S. that was submitted in Glasgow refers to this contribution and what happened this year it was like given back so there was an inflation reduction act billions of money is supposed to be now offered to cities and states in the u.s if you look at japan for example 100 japanese regions to be decarbonized and, and decentralized at the same time or in the europe the european union is inviting cities to commit to climate neutrality by 2030 on the condition that they would like to offer financial resources. If if you look at these kind of experiences, obviously there are more and more efforts, which we say that in Glasgow, you remember when we left, we were saying that time for a multi-level action has come. And throughout the year, we have seen such examples like that. I can also say that it will also be getting better in the global south even. The, the new government in Colombia, the upcoming government in Brazil, we have had preparatory meetings with all of them. They are also coming back stronger on multi-level action. There is a positive tendency that things are moving in the right direction, but we cannot, first of all, say that this applies to every country. Urbanization as a non-market approach has started to take attraction since Glasgow. During the year, together with the UN Capital Development Fund and the UN Agency for, for Subnational Finance, they're also now working on it. So it is still a process that in the Sharm el Sheikh, there was no conclusion on the new definitions. This gives us the hope because uh, there is still chance for us to put this into the official mechanisms. This will give much more hope for climate finance to come to the cities in the global south in much bigger scales. Is the question of governance discussed in, in these uh, meetings? It is now the task of governance. It is capacity building and finance. So it's not anymore whether we are committed to a climate action or not. Yes, we are committed, even in the global south and even in the global north. Questioning whether we should be responsible for our mistakes. Yes, climate loss and damage fund is ad adopted, mm -hmm. but it will be a forward-looking process. Will this be some part of, uh, when we talk about the NDCs, the national action plans uh, that the nation have to deliver every fifth year with higher ambitions? The countries were committed to bring or invited to bring new NDCs to Sharm el Sheikh. What happened during the year? Unfortunately, it was less than two dozens of countries brought that. If we can manage every city hall to turn into almost like a mini cop and that that could bring a new momentum to the climate debate and that's particularly important because you may have followed there is a big debate now listening what has happened in Sharm el Sheikh with 50,000 people attending the challenges and there are more and more authorities questioning the value of this kind of an engagement including ICLE and LGMA we have sp spoken about this at the public level on the podium saying that we need new engagement mechanisms if we want to deliver the Paris Agreement. This is a new engagement mechanism throughout the year between nations, between nations and local and regional governments, and even the way you design the COPs. The way that is currently being practiced is a legacy of 1992. The national interest, the national engagement has changed so much. The Paris Agreement has introduced so many new vision, but the engagement mechanism, the UNFCC, both for parties and to the non NGOs, has not changed since then significantly or uh, meaningfully. And the relatively hard experience in Sharm el Sheikh, be it logistics, be it technical, be it political, could turn into an opportunity. And the good news. If we can tell nations that if now we're in the implementation era, don't wait for cops to make the decisions. Make sure that at home with your local engineering arms, with, this, with the principle of multi-level action in the Glasgow, make sure there's a change at home. The Paris Agreement also introduced, introduced a, a new mechanism called global stock take. And the global stock take is supposed to be held in in 2023, which is Dubai COP. And the good thing is that the preparations for the global stock started earlier in the year, and it was called technical dialogues. 
And what we have managed as LGMA and ICLE in June this year, we convinced the UNFCC negotiators that global stock take should also be receiving inputs from the local level. So we will see new types of COP meeting in the future, you think? I hope. I, I really hope. And I am I I am I am almost confident we used to have this kind of major meetings and since starting from Stockholm. It was Stockholm, then it was Rio, and then we discussed Rio plus twenty, Rio plus ten. What we achieved in 2015, that Environment Assembly will be convened every two years, UN Habitat Assembly will be convened every every four years, and the Climate Conference are convening every COP um, in the climate process every year, but in the biodiversity every two years. So it may be highly realistic, and there are scholars, there are intellectuals, there are experts, which we also work together, who are discussing how we can make benefit of the annual meetings, technical meetings in Bonn, what will be the role of the regional climate weeks that is held every year in different parts of the world, what will be the role of an annual gathering in New York or in Niva, and what will be the role of a nation presiding all these processes. And I must confess, in fact, it should be the developing countries who should start to question the value of this thousands of people gathering in a COP, because if this will be the practice, no developing country will be able to ever participate as a, as a presidency. Take at the local level could be a fantastic opportunity to bring the power of communities and local governments in connection with their national governments to refresh their commitments under the national determined contributions. So in 2023, we hope that now it's time to digest what has been achieved in Glasgow, Sharm el Sheikh, and hopefully in Montreal, so that it is now time for delivery. And in that sense, we have a golden opportunity for stock take process. And ICLE will be working with all other partners like LGMA, Earth Day Network, and others to make sure that stock take process, which means a review of our commitments for climate and sustainability action is discussed every city hall, every community can be part of it. In the middle of the year, there will be an important agenda in June. There will be UN Habitat Assembly in Nairobi, which will also give us the chance that we can build upon the outcome of climate and urbanization ministerial that was held in Sharm el Sheikh. And at the same time, there will be UN climate negotiations in Bonn. And that during the year, we will also have the SDG summit in September. So I am hoping that we will understand how multilateral and how multi-level action is so essential for the sustainability of our world, we will make more progress by leaving the war and other conflicts behind us. Oh, great, uh, Junus. And uh, thank you for, for your contribution today. And uh, looking forward to see how also this process can expand to more of a bottom-up perspective in this uh, action-oriented uh, agenda, looking into climate change and biodiversity and other sustainability issues the time to come. Thank you very much, Jonas, for today. Thank, thank you. Thank you, Kai, also for your continuous support to communicate our activities and achievements to a broader community of your network. Thanks a lot and wish you a nice uh, winter break.